Hello mga ma'am sir and welcome back to Weena Wonders. If you're new here, I'm Weena and this is a booktube channel. So today's video is going to be a very long reading wrap-up. The past few months have been kind of crazy for me, so I haven't had the opportunity to really sit down and film something like this. But the books I've read over the past few months have been very, very interesting. Let's get right into it. So the first book I want to talk about today is The Empathy Exams by Leslie Jameson. In my past reading wrap-up, I mentioned that this was a book that I was very, very interested in and that I really wanted everyone to check out because of its interesting premise. The first essay has to do with Leslie Jameson's experience as an actor in sort of the medical demos of med students. And that's something that I find super duper interesting as someone who was formerly in a pre-med course back in college and also just in general, like how do you feign empathy and how do you become the test subject for something like empathy? I found that first essay very, very engaging and I loved how it was sort of juxtaposed with her experience with abortion, with family, with what it means to be a woman and a good partner. But then um, as the book progresses, it does kind of slide and in the end, this book ended up kind of being a mixed bag for me. I feel like the really, really strong essays are the ones that she's able to very closely tie into her personal experiences. And I felt that in those essays, um, that premise or like that investigation of what it means to empathize with someone really, really came across. Whereas in the other essays, like the ones that are a little bit more journalistic, there's just something a little bit off about it. And I'm not sure if it's the essay per se, or it's more of its inclusion in this project, which takes on a completely different tone. And the thing is, I'm all for diversity within a project. Like, I don't necessarily think that um, something has to be super neat or super like wrapped up with a bow, um, but I do think that there needs to be a certain kind of cohesion, and I do think that there has to be some sort of purpose that uh, the structure is driving at. So some of the later essays just did not do it for me and I gave this a 3 over 5 stars. After that, I read The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. Now this book was a little bit strange for me because I was really really looking forward to reading it. I heard so many booktubers recommend it and when I read what the premise was about, I was like, oh my gosh, this seems like my cup of tea. So uh, this novel revolves around Cora Seaborn, who is a very young widow. So she's widowed and their marriage was kind of loveless. So in a way, she sort of celebrates the fact that she had been freed from that agreement and she travels to um, this town called Aldwinter. This town is sort of at the edge of a lake and at the edge of like a seashore. And there is kind of a rumor going around that there's something called the Essex Serpent in the water. So I guess you can think of it as like the British version of the Loch Ness Monster. For those of you guys who are from England who are watching this, I'm so sorry if I got that completely wrong, but that's sort of how it came across to me. And while Cora is there, she meets this reverend dude, Reverend William, and there's a kind of tension there. He can't really hit that because in addition to being a reverend, he is also married and and so it's this whole thing. And it's a very sort of intimate look into this new friendship, but then also the friendships that Cora kind of has surrounding her. It sort of reminded me initially of The Mermaid Chair by Su Monk Kid, which is about um, this married lady who goes on this retreat type thing and falls in love with a man of the cloth. I feel like ever since Fleabag, um, hot priests have just been super in, <laughs> even if these books obviously predate bag but anyway what I mean to say is that it's definitely something that I thought I would end up liking however that wasn't the case when it comes to the writing itself I feel like the language is very beautiful and Sarah Perry really knows what she's doing in terms of the way like she describes things um, the way that she characterizes people and I did find that very very interesting especially the way that she wrote about the reverend's wife. Like, I was super, super enamored with her. Uh, but my qualm with this book really has to do with the structure and the plot. It's just weird. Like, there are some chapters that go on and on and on and on, and then there are some chapters that just kind of feel like summaries, or like she's just telling you to hit the fast forward button because now we are gonna get to the point. And I really, really hate that. I feel like it's something that pulls me out of the experience of the book. 
And also, I really didn't like the two main characters. I mentioned that she's very good at characterization, and in particular, I think she was very good at sort of talking about the side character. Like Dr. Luke Garrett, he was super duper, like, I don't know, <laughs> he's hot. But when it came to the main characters, I found myself like really, really not rooting for them. I found myself just hating them and being really annoyed at them for how selfish they were and for how just narcissistic they were especially the reverend you know like Cora I can kind of understand because she had a difficult childhood and she kind of had difficulty coming into her own so you know she's curious whatever but the reverend though like okay number one you're super duper preachy number two you're married and number three like you're not even a good parent it could have been structured better could have been paced better and I feel like the characters could have been written better. <laughs> In the end, I ended up giving this 2.5 over 5 stars. After that, I ended up reading Intimations by Zadie Smith. So this is a book of very personal essays from Zadie Smith and it's very very much in the moment because all of these essays revolve around her experience of being in quarantine toward the earlier part of this year. So I think the time frame would be around January to March and it kind of chronicles her time experiencing the quarantine and it culminates in her picking up her family and relocating from New York to London for the duration of the lockdown and the pandemic. And I really really enjoyed this book. Um, the writing was so clear and so crisp but also to have that clarity kind of juxtaposed with the madness of the situation and just the frenzy that everyone was in it was so beautiful and she was able to kind of really highlight um, the normal, I guess, kind of uh, madness and vibrancy of New York and contrast that with the chaos of its emptiness during lockdown and what that felt like to somebody who lives in New York, like to a New Yorker and what it felt like also to say goodbye to that sense of home and normalcy and I just I loved it and the images that she uses here are just so freaking good like she has one essay that kind of utilizes the image of Mel Gibson on set with Jim Caviezel for Passion of the Christ and she just uses that as this metaphor to kind of uh, bounce off these ideas about the way that people treat each other and I just found that really 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 engaging and I swear Zadie Smith is a freaking genius. That said, I think that this book could have been improved too in a couple of ways. Um, the main thing for me is that it was super short and I completely understand because of course um, the time frame for the experience was limited but that also kind of begs the question of whether or not they should have let this stew a little bit longer because I feel like there could have been more insight kind of drawn out from the experience of like leaving that initial lockdown and there could be a lot more reflectiveness um, on these experiences if they'd sort of let it stew for a bit maybe you know leave some room for rumination when it comes to memoirs and essays i always kind of think that time is an essential um player when it comes to writing a very very insightful very poignant essay or memoir because without time things don't develop quite as fully like these were really really good <laughs> backwards these are really really good but i do think that they're could have been room for like a little bit more depth or a little bit more fullness. So because of that, um, I decided to give this 4 out of 5 stars. Next is a book that I read for a buddy read uh, with my friend Shin, who is Ronuel Del Rosario here on YouTube and who you should totally check out by the way. I freaking love his videos, I love his taste in books and I love how honest he is when it comes to his reviews and what he's enjoying. Um, so Shin and I were thinking of reading this book because it's something that I heard a lot about. I heard that it was like this very subtle horror, that it was kind of creepy, and also that it had a lot to do with astrology and tarot. And for those of you guys who might be new here, I am 100% that person who's like, what's your zodiac sign as a Capricorn? What time were you born? And I also heard that the character was an older woman. 
and I love hearing stories told from the point of view of people who are older because I feel like that's something that isn't explored enough. And by older, I mean older in the moment and not older in a way that's like... They're old at the beginning and then the whole story is a flashback and then they're old again at the end. So this novel follows an old lady named Janina who lives in this small Polish village that's very much isolated and it's in the woods. During the winter, there's no cell phone signal. It's very dark and it's a ways away from the nearest town. And the book opens with her and her friend discovering that one of their neighbors has been murdered. And it's very, very creepy, very interesting because there are these mysterious uh, murders in the town and Janina is sort of taking us with her as she goes and explores them and this is all sort of laced together with um, Her sort of decreasing clarity of what's really happening around her because she's also older She's living alone and that presents a lot of challenges for her and the thing about this book is more than just being like a mystery thriller or whatever, it's also really a commentary on the humanist movement, I feel, and what comes next after humanism. So humanism is basically this belief or this um, sort of centering of norms and values around the human experience and around people. So on one hand, you can see this as sort of hopeful or beneficial, or at least that's kind of what it was post-World War II. But um, as we're getting older and we're approaching things like climate change and um, you know, like extinction of certain species, we can also see like the certain detriments that humanism has. And that would be something that this book is definitely sort of commenting on. Uh, Janina's one very big sort of central trait is that she loves animals. And so she despises a lot of the people in her neighborhood who are poachers, hunters, etc. And that's really explored well throughout the book. So I really enjoyed the atmosphere of this book. I feel like Janina, was such a well thought out, crazy, quirky, lovable character despite all of her nastiness sometimes, especially when it comes to her neighbors who honestly don't seem to really know what they're doing. Like they're hunting but they don't see it as cruelty. And I love her. I just love the way that she was written. I think that that was very clever and I also loved a lot of her friends who worked in the town and the people that she got along with. I think the one pitfall of this book would probably be that there are just parts where everything is so long. And I understand that that's kind of necessary for things to be descriptive and immersive and atmospheric, but sometimes it comes to a point where you're just wondering why you're being told this certain thing. So I feel like there could have been a little bit more trimming done in that sense. And also there is kind of a plot twist to this book. I'm not going to give anything away. But I was able to guess it. So <laughs> I would have liked to be like caught off guard. Although Shin was caught off guard, he said that he totally didn't see it coming. So if you've read it, let me know how you found it. The next book that I read is probably my favorite from everything that I read over the past few months. And this is M Train by Patti Smith. So Patti Smith is a rock and roll legend. She's a poet and she's also a memoirist. This is already the second memoir of hers that I've read. Her first one was Just Kids and I loved that too. Just Kids centers around her friendship with Robert Mablethorpe and how they made it as artists, how their lives kind of really were intertwined and how their creativity was kind of this hand holding through life, which is just so freaking beautiful. And M Train, on the other hand, kind of explores travel, creativity, and what it means to nurture yourself as an artist. And I really, really enjoyed this. Like, I enjoyed this more than just kids, I think. M Train concentrates a lot more on like the connectivity of certain life events, the synchronicity of certain things that happen to Patty, and it also explores like this relationship between inspiration and the actual crafting of the work and what it means to live a life as an artist. I feel like there are a lot of 
memoirs on creativity that kind of isolate the creativity part as though the person being talked about or the artist being talked about isn't someone that gets up in the morning, makes coffee, has breakfast, and then takes a shit, you know? But with Patty, it's very well-rounded. It's very holistic that artists are also people who have lives like they're people who have to go through the hassle of like paying taxes and who go through the heartbreak of like having to bury their spouse or you know um take care of two young children and i feel like those are just things that are not um talked about enough when it comes to creative spaces like it's not always <laughs> like some hot guy from lost like painting shirtless dappled in the light from the sunset you know like sometimes it's just you in your pajamas struggling to hold everything together plus patty smith talks a lot about self-discipline here and i also think that that's something not highlighted enough like it's not always a burst of inspiration it's also being able to sit down every day and devote maybe just 30 minutes maybe like six hours to whatever it is that you want to do so I am going to be giving this the rare 5 over 5 stars because it was just that good. And it is currently in stock on fullybookedonline.com. So, you know, if you are looking for a Christmas gift for yourself, get M Train. So, after reading M Train, I was like in a Patti Smith hangover where everything I picked up just seemed not satisfactory. It's just like, I'm not gonna enjoy this as much as I enjoyed the Patti Smith book. What do I do? So I was like, okay, I'll pick an author whose work I've read like sort of extensively before so that I can be guaranteed that I'll have a good time, I'll have fun, I'll really like it. And so I picked up The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. V.E. Schwab is one of my favorite, 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 favorite contemporary fantasy authors. Um, I really, really love the Shades of Magic trilogy. Like, I gobbled that shit up, like, in the span of two weeks. It made me cry, it made me laugh, I love the characters. 10 out of 10 would write fanfic for it. And I also loved Vicious. Like, oh my god. Victor is just so freaking sexy. Like, that's that's how you write, like, a hot villain with a heart of gold. I'm a fan of the way she writes. I think her pacing is usually on point. I, I love the characters. I love the premises that she comes up with. And I love the nuances as well of the relationships. Like, I think Kel and Rai, that whole relationship was just like... So when I picked this up, um, I already knew about the premise because I follow her on Twitter and on Instagram, as you do with your favorite authors. And so I knew that this would be about a girl named Addie LaRue who kind of makes a pact with a devil or like a spirit. And that pact kind of goes wrong because she wishes for herself to be free. But the way that that wish manifests or like the fulfillment of that wish manifests is that she's unable to make a mark in anyone's life. No one can remember her. And so she goes through life um, sort of struggling with that and realizing exactly what it means to be free. And so she and the devil, aka Luke, kind of have um, this very complicated relationship where on one hand, he's the one who sort of damned her to this fate, but on the other hand, he's also her companion. He's the only one who knows what she's going through and so in that way, like while reading the book, when he's there, there's like this feeling of dread but also this feeling of relief that she's finally able to talk to someone. Although I feel like the premise was like super duper freaking promising, I think for the first time I'm going to say that I am very disappointed in this book. I feel like it lacked a lot of editing and I felt like it wasn't V.E. Schwab's best work. Um, not to say that it wasn't well written, it was, like the language definitely holds up and I feel like Addie is a likable character, like she does grow on you and you do feel sympathy for her, you do find yourself rooting for her. But my major problem with this book is that there are small lapses in the logic of it that just really kind of pull me out because uh, it's like there are certain things that are a little bit carelessly written, you know, that um, that I feel could have been sort of tweaked or edited out if they had given a little bit more time and attention to really, you know, 
uh, checking like all of the minute details and stuff like this like long sagas of history that is like my shit like the time traveler's wife is one of my favorite books like i love stuff that goes like backwards and forwards in time and i like taking notes of like what happens and they're just small inconsistencies that i don't uh, I don't like and they really pulled me out of the world of the book and another qualm of this is the structure of it and so in this book okay so the main reason why we're being told this story is because Addie eventually meets someone who remembers her and his name is Henry um, Henry has his own shit going on and Addie is sort of surprised when he remembers her because it's the first time in 300 years that someone has remembered her but I think my main qualm with Henry is that he's super freaking boring like i did not find him interesting at all and i did not think that he was worthy of miss adeline larue <laughs> like i didn't think that he was a good match if that makes any sense um and also i feel like that might be partly because of the structure of this book where we're introduced to henry so late in the narrative and yeah, we don't have enough time to get to know him, which I think is just really weird in a book like this. And not to keep comparing this to Time Traveler's Wife because they're completely different books, but in that book, you have an equal time like to get to know both Henry and Claire. Here, it's like you get to know Addie a lot, and then there's like a fast-forward montage sequence of getting to know Henry and why you should root for him. And I just found like the plot twist of the ending of this to be super freaking weird. Like I feel like that should have been mentioned kind of like toward the middle too. If you've read this, you know what I'm talking about. The thing with Luke and the thing. I don't want to spoil it, but yeah, if you've read it, let me know if you thought it was weird. And if it was weird that they were sort of making a big deal out of it. Dude, isn't he like a freaking demon? Isn't he supposed to be evil? Isn't he supposed to be like the devil or something and again i maintain that uh madame v e schwab should definitely watch kuroshi tsuji or black butler yeah i just feel like she lost the thread somewhere like it was weird reading this book was weird so not a bad book but also just don't get your hopes up i don't think it's going to be a favorite even if you are a big fan of v e schwab's <laughs> So that's it for this video. Please let me know what you guys have been reading. Uh, what are your reading plans for December? What are you most excited for? And what are some great books that you have been picking up lately? Also, if you've read any of these books, please let me know what you thought of them. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Whatever it is, let's talk about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!